Oh, and we're here today to talk about a small movie called The Hobbit. Perhaps you've heard of it. I have not. Perhaps, perhaps you remember that some years ago, the Lord of the Rings trilogy by Peter Jackson was one of the great, in my mind, one of the great epic storytelling experiences of mm -hmm. our time. I really thought that he captured the story, the Tolkien stories. We've waited, and now we are back with the prequel, in a way, to this, which is the story of Bilbo Baggins and how he comes to be on this journey with a bunch of dwarves. We have Martin Freeman, who is in here playing the role of Bilbo, young Bilbo Baggins. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of our favorite characters back again. For instance, Gandalf. We see a lot of new faces in, which is dwarves. But can I tell you that the reason to see The Hobbit is the moment we see Gollum again. Because as far That's as That's a long time into the movie. It is a long time into the movie. It's interesting because they go on this great long journey, which I'm sort of interested in. I don't know if I'm interested in it three parts worth, but when Gollum comes back, I think, wow, that is, he moves you. Here's this animated character based on Andy Serkis, and I find myself moved by him. I have no idea what you thought of it. Well, Gollum is terrific, and you know, I thought he was just about the best part uh, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, too. But look, a lot of people have been wondering how, you know, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy was nine hours of movie mm. based on three massive novels. How is Peter Jackson going to take the relatively slim novel that The Hobbit is and turn that into nine hours of movie? And why? And, well, look, and why do it? And the cynical answer is that there is a pile of gold to be made by uh, inflating The Hobbit into the event status of a trilogy. Uh, but look, I think the real answer may be that it doesn't really matter how long these books are. The plots are the same, which is, we gather together a fellowship of the noble-hearted, and then they wander, and they do battle, and they wander some more, and do some more wandering and battling, and then more wandering and battling. And then Gollum shows up and makes it all interesting again. That's right. I mean, look, welcome to Middle-earth, the fantasy that never ends. I thought you were going to say welcome to Hollywood, which is another version of it. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't have really that different a reaction to The Hobbit than I did to the Lord of the Rings films. I think that those movies have a kind of visual grandeur and a somber quality that I liked. I don't think the plots are great. Mm. I don't think the plot of this one is great. I really did like Martin Freeman as Bilbo. If anything, he's a more interesting character than Frodo is because he's this kind of English tea time gentleman who has no interest in adventure and is no good at it. He's he almost like home in his shire. That's right. He's like Woody Allen stuck in the middle <laughs> of this thing. And the drama, to the extent that there is any, is about seeing him adjust to that and try to become a Middle Earth adventurer. Um, I thought the movie was fine, but you know there are all these. CGI battle scenes with orcs and trolls that were, for me, a step away from Clash of the Titans. Well, I don't think it's exactly Clash of the Titans, actually. I think there's far more going on than that. It is so worth it for me to get to when Gollum comes back again because he is the heart and soul of this. And it makes me very curious to see what Peter Jackson is going to do with two more episodes.